I'm joined here by Zed Physics. Hi. Um, and we're going to be talking a bit about Oxford PAT preparation, but I guess this is also going to be applicable per, for maybe people who are thinking about applying for Cambridge or Imperial or other universities where there's some kind of entrance exam for the physics side of things. Can I just start with some numbers though? Yeah, I right. love numbers. So uh, last year uh, in 2024, um, Oxford received 1,790 applications for physics and um, only 188 places were available. So that meant there are, you know, basically almost 2,000 students who are kind of super motivated, they're engaged, they're going to get top grades. But of those, most of them were completely unsuccessful and didn't get to Oxford. Or at least not unsuccessful, but not successful at getting an Oxford place. So um, there's basically a lot of stuff that uh, students could be doing to improve their chances of being part of that kind of elite 188 people. And I thought today we'd just go through a few ideas and activities that they could be thinking about. Um, and of course, Zed Physics here, you've been doing some uh, master classes, you've been doing some sessions. I guess you've got a bit more experience recently with people who've actually got into Oxford. Yeah, so a lot of my students who have gotten offers from uh, Oxford or Cambridge over the past 12 months, one of the main things to really focus on is to really, really understand the physics. So the skill that you really want to develop is to be able to solve unknown and novel problems. Because when you're sitting those entrance exams, when you're doing that interview, mm. you will come across a problem that you initially have no idea what how, how to even start. And it's really important to try it out of every possible angle and not be afraid to make any mistakes because it happens to all of us. You know, we come across a problem. Initially, we have no idea how to solve it. Yeah. And when that happens, it's kind of what you do afterwards. But in the meantime as well, there's multiple other things that, that you can do. Yeah, and the numbers I quoted just then, this was actually published by the University of Oxford, and they've got a report on the physics aptitude test that they release every year. And this included, I, th I think Oxford in particular, they're quite transparent and open about things. Um, so this included information about um, contextualised GCSE results. It included information, and they've got like graphs and things which, which you can see on the screen, um, about you know how people found the PAT system for like doing it online, which we'll talk about later. But... If you're thinking about um, Oxford or one of these kind of universities, hopefully by this point you've already kind of at least Googled Oxford Physics and you've gone to the website to see what they offer. And so a lot of stuff I'm going to talk about now is stuff that's freely available, it's recommended by Oxford and therefore it's at least one of the first things you should be doing. So I actually went to a talk recently um, where they were talking about Oxbridge entries and they had somebody there from Oxford and Cambridge. And what they actually said was that it doesn't really matter if you're like captain of the netball team or the football team and you've been in the debating society. What they really want is somebody who just loves the subject and has done lots of kind of super curricular activities. So in a way, um, you might be brilliant at public speaking and like, you know, doing sort of all these different act extracurricular activities. You might have got uh, DV and things. But to some extent, that doesn't really matter as much as just being like a massive physics nerd, is it? Yep, absolutely. What a physics good difference. Yeah, yeah, this is what we talk about. This is, like, this, is, this is what people talk about, yeah. Um, and so I think super curricular activities are going to be super important. So this isn't just doing your A-levels and aiming for an A-star. It's about, especially if we're kind of talking about physics, which is what this video is about, is doing things which are physics-related that are on top of the specification. Absolutely. I think also, if you're preparing for the physics exam, let's say you're taking, let's say that you're planning to take the PAT in October, one of the first things that you should probably do is to go on the website and you'll find a very specific syllabus. I'm sure you'll be able to put that in the background. Yeah, yeah. That syllabus gives you a point by point of all the topics that you need to cover. Some of those things, a lot of them will be year 13, so you can get in touch with your teacher and you can get some of the year 13 materials, let's say on gravitation, maybe circular motion, you might be covering that in September, for instance, and go over those independently. I'm sure that across both of our channels you'll be able to find multiple very helpful videos to help you with that process as well. Yeah and something that I saw that I wasn't actually aware of until I started researching this video is something called Compos. So this is a comprehensive Oxford mathematics and physics online school. Um, not physics online like me but it's another <laughs> kind of use of the physics online school and basically this is run by the Department of Physics at Oxford and what they do is they teach people stuff that's kind of beyond the normal A-level curriculum. And there are these kind of opportunities where, first of all, it gives you a bit of a taste of what it's like to actually 
be working with real academics and kind of not just in school level, but like at a high level. And there are so many opportunities for this independent work. And there's mentoring with other people who might be at university at the moment. Now, of course, each year the dates are going to change when you've got to apply for that. But have a look at compost. And also, um, Oxford have an official preparing for the PAC course. So it's not like you go in completely blind. They want to give everybody a fair chance, whatever their background. And this is, you know, students in the UK, people who might be abroad. And they want to, want to make it as, I guess, a fair fight as possible. So people going down that route, you've had every chance to kind of plan for this and prepare for it. So it's not just like the public school kids get an advantage and state school pupils kind of get left behind. Um, other things I've seen that are really useful are the two things that you should be probably be doing anyway. One of them is Isaac Physics. And the second one, oh, yeah, oh, and wait, actually, check, check out my cup. <laughs> yeah, this is actually an official Isaac Physics mug here. Um, so Isaac Physics, it's basically uh, lots of questions written by the same people who actually probably write and help people prepare for the PAT test and, and also the, the Cambridge equivalent as well. And so, they're just really good questions because they, the only thing that you have to input typically is just the final answer. And those are the best type of questions. If you solve as many of them as possible, you just literally increases your chance of an offer. And even more so when you're in the interview, you have a massive bank of questions in your head that you might be able to reference to. You might think, okay, this situation is a little bit like that type of situation that we that I've seen on Isaac Physics, you know, two years ago, and that uh, could be could be really really valuable. Yeah. So Isaac Physics, and also it's, it's such a big thing now that the people at Oxford or people at Cambridge, uh, the universities which which you're applying for, they know what it is, they know mm -hmm. what it's about, and therefore, I guess you know potentially you could talk about I guess how you've actually involved, how you've actually enjoyed doing the questions and actually working independently to solve these, and also it really brings in a lot of the A level math skills that A level Physics doesn't. Uh, something else that they mentioned. Um, was about the Olympiad and I think that probably the Olympiad questions are going to be fairly similar to in, in start to the kind of Pat style questions. Yeah I almost think the Olympiad questions are even a little bit harder mm. especially since the change potentially of the Pat to multiple choice where time is probably a major component okay. but I mean practicing harder questions can only be a a great thing and additionally they're just really, really tough very unusual questions so taking part in the Olympiad it doesn't matter if you get gold or not or silver or bronze or certificate what it matters is to be exposed to do those types of situations and also to teach your brain to just not panic when faced with an unknown problem and kind of enjoy the challenge because that is trust me half of the battle yeah I think if you're looking forward to doing those questions and you're enjoying it that's kind of what these kind of universities want to see and so with the Olympiad, the, I suppose the only caveat, the only potential problem is that it has to be entered by your school. So if you're an individual student, you can't just go and do an Olympiad test mm -hmm. yourself. It has to be done through your school, through your teachers. But the Olympiad, again, it's a great team of people. A lot of them work at Oxford. Uh, and actually, having you know met these people before, they're all lovely people. A lot of them are based either at Cambridge or Oxford. And they want people like you to be involved in the physics journey just, just for the enjoyment of it. A bit like the way that, I guess, people do puzzles in the back of newspapers because they like doing the crossword. People who kind of end up doing physics or these kind of STEM subjects, they're often the people who just like the problem that they see. Yeah. Okay, the next thing um, is EPQ. And again, if you do this extended project qualification, it can provide some evidence that you've gone well beyond the specification, especially if you're going down like a physics or a science-y oh, nice. topic. But again, that's something that I guess really um, you'll have made the decision if you're going to do an EPQ in year 11 as you're applying for sixth form. And I guess if you're already in sixth form and you're thinking about Oxford, it's kind of a bit too late if you haven't started. But EPQs are a great, um, a great way for you to kind of structure some extra stuff. Um, and I guess also just keeping a journal of all of the stuff you've done. I think that's important because there will be activities and talks that you go to and I think as well, it's not just a case of reading a brief history of time, which is like the standard physics book that people say they've read and they've given, it's given them like a, a passion for the subject. Obviously, reading is important. And if you like to read about science, that's a, that's a good thing. But it's not just reading books now. You can like watch videos, you can get involved with things, you can go to talks, you can kind of find a lot out there on the internet and actually be proactive in kind of, I guess, kind of finding your own way through rather than just waiting for somebody to tell you to do something. Absolutely. I think also 
it's all of those things if you keep a journal will be great to go into your personal statement and one of the things i would highly recommend for personal statements is noticing and then writing down what inspired you but then also what did you uh, take as an action. For instance, you might have watched a video online on the process of Feynman integration and then having taught yourself Leibniz theorem, a very advanced mathematical concept, and showcasing that you've mastered a mathematical topic by yourself, showing that you're an independent learner, you can find resources, and that you enjoy learning mathematical things. And if you keep repeating that, oh, I attended a lecture that inspired me to read about quantum theory, etc., etc., this will be a really, really powerful way to structure your personal statement. But ultimately, for the PAT test, you just need to be really confident and good at your physics, don't you? And I think that's yeah. where, I think sometimes at school, they always want you to be doing, getting more involved in more clubs and extracurricular activities. As far as the university is concerned, they just want you to be able to like cope with the demands of the physics course, and therefore you need to be good at the physics. Now, I guess we've talked about PAT quite a lot. There's a lot of good stuff on the Oxford website. Um, students go for Cambridge, what do they do? So, depend, depending which degree you're interested in, if you're interested in natural sciences or if you're interested in the engineering, you'll be taking the ESAT. The ESAT has a tremendous time component. Uh, there's no calculator involved. For PAT, you need to be able to master the online calculator. Tip from me, just practice it, practice mm -hmm. it. Um, it is available, there is an available practice test on the uh, Oxford website. Uh, for the ESAT, you have to practice not using a calculator. It's quite funny because in my tutoring for the ESAT, I, um, w when I start doing this around this time of year, initially I'm, I'm quite bad at mental maths. Okay. And over until October, I, I do so much of it that I practice it. By the time of October, you get used to so many little tricks that are very, very much ESAT specific that you almost get a sense of how to calculate things really, really quickly. Now, even if the exam does not necessarily go very well, believe me, you will have gained so many more skills and your understanding of physics will be and mathematics will be so much better that you can only win in this situation. Yeah, I think, although a lot of people, you know, there's this number I quoted at the start, I can't remember what it was now, but basically there's going to be 1,600 people who prepare for the PAT and they don't go to Oxford, mm -hmm. but it's not like there's nothing left for them. You know, some of them might go to other universities, you know, and we're talking about, you know, the, the kind of really good universities around the country. I mean, you went to Manchester, mm -hmm. I went to Sheffield, I, I had a really good time there. And for me personally, I probably had a better time being in Sheffield because of like being able to like do lots of mountain biking. I guess you did a lot of climbing around Manchester. I did, yeah. And so for me, if I'd gone to Cambridge or Oxford, I'd have probably felt that was academically brilliant, but not necessarily the kind of lifestyle I wanted. So for me, I've got no regrets about not, not going there at the time. And of course, if you're preparing for the PAT, it means that when you come back to your normal A-level lessons, they're going to seem relatively straightforward. The past papers are going to be quite straightforward. And that's given you a much better chance of getting the really high grades you need for whichever university that you're applying for in the end. Absolutely. Um... All of those students, over 1,600 students that potentially did not necessarily get an offer, um, I guarantee you that they would have gone to fantastic universities and have really bright futures ahead. So don't worry too much. Absolutely. And finally, um, a list of all the kind of things that I've talked about in this video. I'm going to link to them all in the description on this video on YouTube. And of course, um, if you are thinking about this, then make sure that you do talk to your teachers talk to your parents and also spend a bit of time really kind of taking charge of this because it's like if you're wanting to go for these kind of top universities then there's going to be some I guess pressure not so much pressure but the incentive is on you to actually find out about things and the opportunities and this might be signing up for master classes with Isaac Physics it might be looking at um, I think courses run by the University of York where they look at particle physics or even just looking at other university courses and maybe their online kind of things that they're putting out there which are often free to attend because they're you know, funded centrally by the universities to get people like you involved. But yeah, uh, Zed Physics, thanks so much for your advice. Thanks so much for having me. And of course, if you finally, 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 if you want to um, have a look at some of the courses that Zed Physics has done, he's got stuff on his website where he's done stuff previously for the PAT and the ESAT paper, and I'm sure you're going to be doing similar things in the future. Yeah, yeah, we're going to kick off in uh, probably in a couple of months or so, probably throughout the summer and then into exam season, September and October. So yeah, um, so yeah, stay tuned for that. Cool, thank you. Thank Bye -bye. you.